you can get a handle on inflammation in your body if you just have the knowledge. I won't waste a whole lot of time telling you how bad inflammation is, but it's bad. Okay, it is the root of all chronic disease. It is the root of why you might be in pain. It is the root of why you might be sleeping badly. It is terrible stuff. So why not just get right to the DRAS tax and figure out what the most inflammatory foods are? Because we can add all kinds of anti-inflammatory components and that's great, I've done videos on that. Okay, but what about removing the most inflammatory things? So without further ado, let's dive in. Now I do wanna make sure you hit that red subscribe button, hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications so you never miss my videos just about every single day. All right, the first one, believe it or not, is fructose. You would think that it's sugar, right? You would think that it's straight up table sugar or straight up glucose, but eh, it's fructose. That's the sugar that comes from fruit. Now does that mean that you should not consume fruit? No, okay, it depends if you're doing keto or not, but whatever. The thing is, is that fruit has at least enough in the way of the antioxidants to sort of combat some of the negative byproduct that you're gonna get from fructose, but that's not the point of this video. What the heck is going on with fructose? Okay, fructose has to get metabolized by the liver. Okay, so it's pretty hard on the body in the first place. You can only handle a little bit at every point in time. But the journal, the American Society of Nephrology found something really intriguing. Okay, they found that it increased a particular protein known as ICAM-1, I-C-A-M-1. Now it's the job of this protein to bind to white blood cells that are flowing through the bloodstream. So this ICAM-1 is elevated in blood vessel cells. So here's what this looks like. White blood cells are flowing through the bloodstream, okay? And fructose triggers this ICAM-1 to be present. And it's the job of this ICAM-1 to grab the white blood cells out of the bloodstream, just you know, innocently traveling down and say, hey, we're gonna start some inflammation and go to war. It's that simple. The best analogy that I can give you is like the draft, right? You have a bunch of potential soldiers walking down the uh, sidewalk, right? And then all of a sudden there's someone from the government that's just standing on the side of the street and they're just, they grab you and make you go to war. I mean, that's obviously extreme, but that's the best way that I can describe how this ICAM-1 works. And fructose elevates that significantly. But there's another study that puts things into a little bit more of a simple sense. So this study was published in Lipids in Health and Disease. It took a look at 14 subjects. It was a randomized crossover study. So they took 14 subjects. They had them consume either glucose, sucrose, or fructose. And guess what? Out of those three, fructose drove C-reactive protein levels the highest. That is the cleanest, simplest marker for inflammation within the body. So word to the wise, high fructose corn syrup, anything that's gonna be concentrated fructose at all, or just copious amounts of fruit, be careful of. All right, now let's talk about the next one, which is one that you probably know is bad, soybean oil. Okay, soybean oil is just in everything these days and we can't avoid it. Yes, it's a high omega-6 fatty acid and that's definitely pro-inflammatory and not necessarily good, but the journal Nutrition and Metabolism published an interesting study that found that we have an increase in chronic inflammatory disease that coincides directly with the increase in consumption of these omega-6s like soybean oil. So how do you avoid this stuff? Well, the good news is there's all kinds of good healthy oils that are out there now, so you don't have to be relying on eating foods that are saturated in soybean oil. Okay, I also want you to take a look at the little chart that's on the screen right now. Okay, this shows how much our soybean oil consumption has gone up over the last couple of decades. Look at that compared to some of these other oils. The red line, that's soybean oil. It's freaking nuts. Now I will say really quick, check out Thrive Market down below in the description if you want to, if you want some alternatives to soybean oil like avocado oil, stuff like that. Super easy to get. There's a link down below. They're an online membership-based grocery store. They sponsor a lot of videos on my channel, so it's a perfect place to give them a big shout out. So after this video, check them out down below in the description for some awesome stuff to load up your pantry the right way. All right, this next one is going to be, well, you're gonna hate me for this. Yes, overcooked meats. Now, I'm a guy that eats a good amount of meat. I'm not pretending to be anything that I'm not. I eat a good amount of meat. But overcooking your meats or processing them too much sends them totally out of the ballpark when it comes down to inflammatory levels. You see, it has to do with advanced glycation end products, AGEs. Now, realistically, this number three should just be AGEs. But AGEs are mostly going to be found in your overcooked meats and your processed meats. Now here's what an AGE is. It's where you take a, like a protein or a lipid that got consumed, right? And it gets glycated, meaning it binds to a sugar for whatever reason, and it basically caramelizes. If you ever caramelized an onion or anything like that, that's basically what's happening inside your body. They caramelize, they get bigger and bulky, and they're very pro-inflammatory, and they're one of the worst things that we can be consuming. 
So when you overcook meats, it chars them and it creates this advanced glycation end product. It doesn't mean that you cannot eat meat, it just means that you need to just cook it right. Let me give you a simple example here with the process side of things. Okay, if you look at a broiled hot dog, that's gonna have about 11,000 kilo units of advanced glycation end products. Compare that to some fresh kosher salami, which is still by all means processed. There's only 600 kilo units, right? So it all depends on the quality and how it's processed and the temperature at which it's cooked. Now also, take a look at bacon. I love bacon, by the way, so don't get me wrong. Okay, when you cook bacon in its own fat, like you don't add additional fat to it, and you cook it at a high temperature to the point that it's charred, 91,000 kilo units of AGEs. Holy cow. So how do you reduce that? Well, you cook it in like an avocado oil. You may think that you're adding extra calories by doing that, but you're not. You're gonna drain it off anyway. Put some avocado oil in the pan, then put the bacon in, and don't cook it to being crispy. Cooking it to crispy may burn off more of the fat, but trust me, the couple calories that you save, you're going to end up reaping negatively when it comes back around because your body's so inflamed. So cook a little bit softly and you'll be better off. Before I move on to the next, I also want you to take a look at the little chart that's down below. Okay. If you look at meat when it's raw, look at how low the AGEs are, and then look at it when it's cooked, okay? That's pretty significant. Now look at it when it's cooked if you have lemon juice added to it. So if you marinate in lemon juice, you can combat some of the AGEs. So this is just a little helpful tip. Next one is one that you're gonna hate me for too, alcohol. All right, I don't need to spend a lot of time on this. You know that alcohol is not good, okay? Moderation is key, but if you have more than a couple of drinks, you do radically disrupt your gut biome. And when you radically disrupt your gut biome, that leads to a leaky gut, which means that lipopolysaccharides and these other things that trigger inflammation flow through the bloodstream, they throw through the gut into the bloodstream and trigger inflammation entirely, chronically, systemically throughout your body. The next one is gluten. Now, there's going to be those of you that are out there that say, well, I don't have celiac, so I, who cares? Gluten's not an issue. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that there are a lot of weird, mysterious links between gluten and inflammation within the body. Now, I have a personal vendetta against gluten because my wife suffered from autoimmune conditions. She suffered from thyroid disease and autoimmune capacity, and it did not heal until gluten was removed from the diet. Now, based on that, we started diving into a lot of research, and we did find there are some links between gluten and TPO antibodies and different inflammatory responses. It has to do with a protein that's elevated in the body when you consume gluten, known as zonulin, which literally triggers a leaky gut it does cause that to occur. So that means that gluten indirectly is triggering a cascade of inflammation throughout the body. Now there's an interesting TED talk that I saw from a guy named Dr. Ford, and he found that in 80% of the children that he worked with that had inflammatory conditions without celiac disease, in 80% of these children, when they removed gluten from the equation, they got better. And these were children without celiac. So they were suffering from autoimmune conditions, they were suffering from inflammatory conditions, and they improved. Then there's another doctor, Dr. Fasano, out of Massachusetts General Hospital, that has an interesting lecture that I'll also link down below, that talks about how gluten triggers an inflammatory response in 100% of the patients that she experimented. Like basically 100% of people that consume gluten are going to have an inflammatory response. Again, somewhat non-concrete answers, because they're all moving pieces, but there is a link there, and it has to do with how much gluten we consume compared to what we used to consume. We are developing intolerances to it, even if we are not suffering from celiac disease. So anyhow, there you go. You eliminate these or reduce these things, and you're gonna be in a much better position to actually add the anti-inflammatory components to your diet so that you can get healthier. Because I'll tell you, a little bit of avocado is not gonna combat a gallon of soybean oil. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.